Welcome back to the Northern Tool and Equipment Tools for the Trades Rat Rod Go-Kart Build-Off. Believe it or not, we are in month six and the carts are so close to being complete. I'm Dylan McCool, YouTube content creator and restorer of cars, trucks, and plenty of junk. And I'll be your host for this journey. Now these students are building these carts from scratch. They didn't start with any kind of off-the-shelf frame or kit. They have been designed and built from the ground up. This is the real deal, folks. So real, in fact, that these students' grade depends on them finishing these carts. They're building these for Richard Petty and Billy Lane to drive, and they must be safely running for them to get a passing grade. The build-off became the curriculum for the year here at Minneapolis Public Schools and Lakeville North High School. And since we last checked in, these teens have been hard at work. We are Minneapolis, and this is our monthly update. The snow being here kind of affects us wanting to drive it a little bit because we don't want to get it all like snow covered and like salt covered. It kind of prevented us from like getting parts, you know, there's a delay in shipping and stuff. We have been working on making sure the wheels are sturdy and not moving around. We just replaced the tires on the front wheels, so those are all nice. We got new ones. It's looking good. We have started working on the brake and acceleration pedal. We're going to start really soon working on the steering. It looked like you're all lined up hiding something there. What do you got? Yeah, we've got something pretty cool behind us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Looks like you guys made some good progress. Yeah, so we've got our wheels on. Um, one thing that we kind of been wondering, so we took your guys' input on caster and camber for the front wheels. So we have our caster yeah. down pretty good, but we're wondering is the camber a little bit too much? Uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, are the tow rods, uh, the tow tie rods or, or anything hooked up now? Uh, the right front looks like it's towed out a lot compared to the left front. So, but yep, yeah, not yet. Yeah, they're kind of pointing a little goofy right now. Um, not quite yet, we don't have our steering in. That's something we're working on, the steering, brakes, our gas pedal and brake pedal now. If it's got enough rubber on the ground, the camber's not gonna hurt you, right? It, it's just a matter of as long as it's got enough rubber on the ground to give it some grip. So I had a question about the braking. We are doing a rear axle mounted brakes and we were wondering if you think we should do cable or fluid in there. On the brakes, if that rear suspension is moving then a lever or a piece there, you're gonna, it would have to move also. So that plays into how the brakes where the, the cable slash a um, cable or hydraulic will definitely eliminate any problems with that because it doesn't care if the two parts move independently of each other. So we're still in the debating phase on designing how we're gonna mount our steering wheel. We know we're gonna mount our rack and pinion actually out front but <clears throat> we're thinking about building kind of like a cage in here uh, out of rebar to hang, have our, our steering column hang from it. Yeah, that's fine. Like I say, the thing opens up so you can get in and out, right, Dad? Really, it's just preference on how you guys want to do it. What, what do you think looks the best, right? I mean, if you've got the plan and you know how you're going to mount it on the front end, then uh, running a piece of rebar right there and just hanging the steering shaft and wheel down from that, I think would be fine. That would be the only things that I would be concerned about really right now is that I don't see steering, brake, or gas. And But other than that, everything looks uh, looks good. It definitely is looking like a rat rod now because you've got a lot more pieces on it. Looks like parts of a sign, parts of a wagon, all kinds of different things. So the rat rod look, the wheels and tires are mismatched, which is perfect. From where you guys have started, it's, it's definitely turned into a what looks like a rat rod go-kart now. So, I mean, you, you hit the objective perfectly. I think these guys are on track to, to have a good solid uh, rat rod at the end of this thing. Like I said before though, the only thing that uh, as a driver that concerns me is <laughs> the no steering, gas or brake. But I know these guys, sounds like they have a plan uh, to get all that stuff in place. So, um, well, I'm excited to see what this thing looks like here in a couple weeks. Minneapolis students are creating a true rat rod. I love how they went scrapping to get their bodywork. 
The hood hinge mount is so cool and so is that tire choice. Now their planning is really showing up in their design. And when the snow melts in Minnesota, I can see a test ride in their very near future. Let's check in on the team at Lakeville. The last time we saw their cart, they were on their sixth frame and making great progress with their seat and gas tank design. Today we saw them finishing up making their brake and throttle work and we saw the cart on the ground start and drive. Kevin looked like he had a blast driving too. Now I can't wait to see these carts in person at the reveal. The first question I have for you guys is about exhaust routing. So when it comes to routing, we wanted to do side exits, but because it's a V-twin um, and running an exhaust to each side of the cart, how would you go about routing that? And when it comes to like lengthwise, would you rather have one be longer than the other or do you want them to kind of be the same length? Well, if you're just looking for the aesthetics of it, you could just Y them in. Uh, you know, run one pipe out of the out of the engine and then split off and run it in uh, one side would definitely be a lot longer if it's actually going to make a power difference. We, we wouldn't really know, but uh, I think for that type of engine, it, we're not going to be running at max RPM the whole time. You're going to be under partial throttle a lot, so you could do it if you had to, if it really messed it up as far as running or something, you could just block it off and use it for aesthetics so you could see it, you know. You got dual exhaust, but there's only one that works. So my question has to do with the uh, gas pedal and how we connect this throttle to the pedal because we're going to end up just taking that dial and putting it directly to the pedal. Would you have recommendations for that? or The gas pedal thing on this whole deal is probably one of the most challenging pieces of it, right? Um, we talked earlier about using a like a... a you can almost use like a shifter cable for like a 10 speed bike or whatever, you know, like the cable inside of a cable. That's what the go karts use for for a throttle and it's flexible. And then you should be able to put a return spring back up there on that control unit um, because that's where you're really going to want to return it from. Because to put a spring or something down on a gas pedal, the cable is really not going to want to push the gas pedal back. So it, it's definitely complex. Um, but I think the cable style is going to be your best option. From your guys' perspective, when you get a brand new car on the track, I mean, what are the biggest things you worry about and are looking for, you know, so I don't crash into the wall and wreck all that hard work? Basically, yeah, just to make sure when you get it down and you put all the load on the wheels and tires and all that, that everything structurally is strong enough, the welds are done correctly, um, you know, that the steering actually does what it's supposed to and that turns it, the wheels turn in the right direction and Get it on the ground, start it, fire it up, run it, see what gives you trouble, and then just fix those areas. So uh, did I hear that right, Thad? You're going to be driving this? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest things that I, when I get into a car for the first time is like all the mechanical stuff. Like I'm hitting the brake pedal, pulling off pit road, making sure it works, making sure the gas isn't sticking, that I'm going to have to pull it back with my foot. Uh, so that return spring on the throttle uh, will be important. And then, like Greg said, turning the wheels, just making sure that it goes where it's supposed to go. Well, I'll be your crash test dummy, so anything that happens, hopefully happens with me and not you. So <laughs> I'll put it through the rings and make sure it's ready to rock for you. The official first on the ground viewing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you guys did a good job. I mean, it looks like it. It rolled, it stopped, it steered, so it does everything it's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. looks like you, uh, it took off. It's going to want to roll off pretty easy, so the gear ratios are good. And yeah. Next up in Lakeville is body panels and pinstriping. Now, as we enter the home stretch, I can't help but mention how both schools are amazingly similar in their progress without ever having seen each other's carts. And I hope you saw what I saw. The personality of both these teams shining through in their designs. And much like their locations, both carts are so unique. Minneapolis Public Schools and Lakeville North, you have so much to be proud of. At our next check-in, we will see close-ups of the custom pinstriping by the legendary Cliff Anderson. And that, my friends, will be the final 
monthly update until the big reveal June 21st. So come back here next month to watch Cliff Stripe and see your last sneak peek of the carts themselves. Northern Tool and Equipment Tools for the Trades program is all about supporting and fueling curiosity and passion for the trades. And they accomplish this by making significant donations of professional grade tools and equipment to schools. And this creates hands-on experiences that drive interest to ultimately help schools expand trade learning options, just like the Rat Rod Go-Kart Build-Off has done. In other words, they're investing in students today to help fill the skilled trades pipeline of tomorrow. Now is where I need your help. Views and shares off this video fund the Rat Rod Build-Off. So please share, comment, and like this video. Your share will help with funding, but it also may inspire a high schooler to try a shop class. I'm Dylan McCool, and I will see you back here for the final monthly update.